Adam Savage here in my cave. And it's your lucky day because I'm taking questions and I'm answering them about my old show, Mythbusters. Um, today's question comes from Gabe Russell. And Gabe says, can you talk about the challenges and benefits of working with slow-mo cameras on Mythbusters? Well, the benefits are there's nothing more fun than looking at something spectacular and weird at extremely high frame rates slowed way down. The slow motion camera might be the most important tool we had after our regular camera. Yeah, that that's, I'm, I'm gonna give it that level. Um, the challenges. We went through a lot of different challenges over the years. Um, a lot of our early challenges were because the technology of digital slow motion cameras was so new in the early aughts that the most <laughs> spoken phrase on the set of Mythbusters in the early days was waiting on high speed. It could take as long as 45 minutes to save a shot. So when we were like lighting farts, every time I did it, we had every, everybody down for like 40 minutes while that shot spools to the hard drive. Yeah. Um, so there definitely was like some parceling out. We had to choose our battles with those, with the early cameras. Um, later on, it became such an important tool for understanding what was happening. Even if the, the, the footage didn't make it into the episode, Jamie and I would frequently have totally different opinions about what just happened in front of us, and the stop the slow mo camera could answer those questions. It could settle those debates, and there, there are just countless times on the show where what we saw in the slow motion camera confounded us, but it was a result, and we could see it, and it changed the way we did things, and we got spectacular results after that. Um, <laughs> early on, there was a lot of play. Uh, I know that Scott Sorensen, A Camera, and Willie Nail, uh, and Duncan Clark all went downstairs and did tons of experimentation with the high-speed camera in the early days. Um, you know, smacking each other in the belly, throwing water balloons at each other. Here's a helpful hint. Don't throw water balloons. Don't have someone throw a water balloon at your face for a high-speed camera shot. Do you know why? <laughs> Because when that water hits your face, it's gonna feel like someone punched you in the face. Seriously, it hurts to get hit in the kisser with a, a, a water balloon. And Scott, I think, has, has the wounds to demonstrate that. Um, it is, uh, it's really hard to focus on something that's not in the frame or that will be in the frame when it needs to be in focus. I just remember Scott spending what seemed like three hours having Don Best throw a baseball at the camera so that as the baseball spun, the Mythbusters logo came up. And to just get that shot right, Don threw that ball hundreds of times. Um, Really, nowadays, the phantom cameras that you can rent can record at astronomical rates, and it feels like a total luxury. I, I love what the slow-mo guys do. I love when they show their process. I love when they demonstrate how much they learn from what they're witnessing in the slow motion, how unexpected some of the results are. Um, yeah, I love uh, uh, Destin on Smarter Every Day. Oh my God, um, his slow-mo stuff with the thousand mile per hour baseball going through 10 baseball gloves. <sighs> Watching that made me feel like I was still making the show. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to think of challenges for the newer equipment. The challenges are the same as with any camera. You've got to make a good shot and, oh, here's one. You have to be able to see what's happening in the shot. If there's anything I see in slow-mo stuff online that people don't understand is the shot is hard to understand what's happening. That's, 
If you watch Mythbusters through its whole run, you would notice that in the beginning days, we didn't have a lot of labels or arrows or lines drawn around stuff, but in the later days we did. We put arrows on the floor where the experiment was gonna happen. We put numbers and delineators and, and dividers on the wall behind us. We used bright colors, bright neon red, orange, yellow. Uh, and we did that because it was really important. I, I wanted every frame to instruct the audience what they were likely to see in that frame. So if I just hold up this white piece of paper, you don't, without any writing on it, you don't know why it's held up here. But if I make a simple drawing, oh, hold on, there we go. If I make a simple drawing, what does that tell you? that tells you that something's gonna hit that. I make a target, and now you look at the target and you know something's gonna land there. So if I put a target somewhere like here, and then I have lines and divider lines going behind it, your brain is gonna look at that frame and it's gonna go, oh, I can see this. Something will move from the left of frame all the way across to this target that's right here. I'm about to witness that. The faster your brain can pick up um, a, a, a potential narrative like that, the faster it can process what it's seeing once that thing happens. Does that make sense? This is, this is like the core philosophy for me about making science programming. The faster your brain can understand the frame that it sees. So there's, I'm sorry, I'm bouncing around a lot, but I, this is an exciting thing for me to describe here. If you look at a frame and you don't know what's going to happen in that frame and then an object enters, now you're watching the object. What's it going to do? What's it going to do? Is it going to hit something? I don't know. I can't see anything. And then, it, you know, there's like a sword there and it slices through the sword. But you didn't see the sword because it was just this gray line in the beginning. Let's say, for, for example, now you, you're watching this object move across. You're wondering what's going to happen to it. Now something starts to happen. Now you're starting to parse what is happening. Oh, I guess it's being split by something. All that mental processing inhibits you from being able to just witness what's happening. So in a different frame, if I set up a line where you can see where an object's gonna enter the frame, you can see where it's gonna travel across, and you can see what it's gonna hit, and you can surmise what's likely to happen there, now when that starts to happen, you don't have to do all that, spend all that mental energy wondering what's gonna happen. Now you can actually witness it and learn about what happens to the thing as it's traveling through the frame. So my goal with every A and B camera shot on the show was always that each shot would tell the whole story of the experiment or as much of a piece of the experiment as we could. And that's the reason for all the bright tape, uh, the numbers and the delineations and the line markers. Um, that was all from learning about how to make high-speed shots more impactful in the narrative. Um, the benefits are so significant. I love taking high-speed shots. I'm so ecstatic now that this thing shoots at 250 frames per second, and I play with that all the time. Um, you just don't, you kids today, you don't know how, how good you've got it, because way back when, literally, at the time I first got my Sony FS700, which at the time that it came out was the lowest cost high speed HD camera that you could get. And it shot at this rate, 250 frames per second. I, that camera was a $10,000 camera back then. I mean, it's a real investment. This is, and you know, our phones can do this now for hundreds of dollars instead of tens of thousands of dollars. I remember, <clears throat> I remember at one point on the show, it was like, we needed a, a different kind of high-speed camera. And I was like, well, what if we rented one of those sports cameras? Because they have, they have cameras on football games that slow stuff down. Can we rent one of those? <laughs> no, we couldn't. They're all spoken for, and they cost a fortune to rent. Um, yeah, back then, it was like, it was, a non, it was not possible. Thank you for asking me a question about the high-speed camera. Um, the arc of our utilization of that specific tool over the course of the show is perhaps like the most important one. The, the, the kinds of stories that the high-speed camera allowed us to tell, that it has allowed me to tell on all of the 
excursions I've made into the public arena uh, are inestimable. Um, I have a favorite high-speed shot. I have a favorite high-speed shot. And it is, uh, it's, well, I mean, it's, it's Jamie smacking me. I love that shot. But the one that I'm the proudest of is when we actually captured the end of a whip breaking the speed of sound. Um, and that was a really, really, we spent a whole day dialing that in. Um, just to give you some inside baseball on the methodology, we divvied up the back of Jamie's shop into this huge grid wall. And then we uh, put bright lights on the grid wall. We put a whip in front of it and I cracked it and I cracked it a bunch of times. And then we used my cracking of the whip to dial in where the cracking was gonna happen. And then I cracked the whip like a hundred times while we shot it every single time to try and get this super close up shot of the end of the whoosh happening, the, the, that, that, that specific moment. Um, yeah, it was not easy. It was not easy. It was a really, really satisfying day to get that, to get that one across the line. Obviously the speed of a whip, the, the high speed shot of a whip cracking had been something as a whip amateur whip maker as it was something that I've been wanting to do since the inception of the show. So I was really glad when we got to do it for the, uh, for the Indiana Jones episode. Dressing up as Indy also wasn't bad. Thank you so much for the awesome questions. Tested patrons keep submitting your questions and I will continue to answer them. Uh, Gabe Russell, thank you for your specifically awesome question about the high speed camera. One of my favorite tools in the world. I also love filming underwater explosions, specifically blasting caps in a fish tank. Oh man, don't go doing that at home, but under supervision, it's awesome. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe. Seriously, don't try anything like that. I've just talked about at home. Bye.